Pandas is a popular data analysis and manipulation library for Python. The core data structure of Pandas is a data frame that stores data in tabular form with labeled rows and columns. Pandas provide a variety of ways to filter data points that is rows. In this video, we will cover different ways to filter a data frame. Before coming to details, let's see how to create a sample data frame student DF. Student DF has six rows and six columns. Columns are also known as labels and rows start with indexes. You can also use dictionary or nested list or dictionary to create a data frame. Let's find out several ways of using lock and iLock to filter data frame. Selecting a single row of data will return the other pandas data container, the series. The visual display of a series is just plain text, as opposed to the nicely styled table for data frames. The sequence of labels Rolno, name, branch etc. are on the left is the index. The sequence of student DF details on the right is the values. You will also notice two extra pieces of data on the bottom of the series. The name of the series becomes the old index name. You will also see the data type of the series. Select multiple rows with dot lock and dot i lock with slice notation. Slice notation is defined by start, stop and step values. When slicing by label, pandas includes the stop value in the return. It returns a data frame, contains the rows in the order specified in a list. Student df.loc03 returns four rows, while student df.iloc03 returns three rows only. The reasons for this difference are due to lock does not return output based on index position, but based on labels of the index. And iLock selects rows based on position in the index. It also means that iLock only works with integers. Let's replace the index values of student DF with column name values to complete the future exercises. Simultaneous selection of rows and columns with dot lock and dot iLock. One excellent ability of both dot lock dot iLock is their ability to select both rows and columns simultaneously. In these examples all the columns were returned from each selection. We can choose columns with the same types of inputs as we do for rows. We simply need to separate the row and column selection with a comma. For example, we can select rows Bale, Jibben, and Soman with just the columns total, age, and hobby. The order of column and row selection doesn't matter. Here, rows Jibben, Bale, and a nudge are not in order. Also, you can select the same row and column multiple times without getting any errors. As you can observe in code 3 and 4, row bail and column Rolno is repeated. Also, you can select multiple rows and columns using lock and i lock and slice notation. Lock method filters row from bail to jibbon and columns from branch to age. And, the iLock method filters rows from bail to George and columns branch and total. The following slices are from row bail to jibbon, inclusive. Its step size is not explicitly defined, but defaulted to 1. But step size in 5 and 6 code is explicitly defined as 2 and 3. The lock indexer can also do the Boolean selection. For instance, here lock method will find the rows where the total is above 200 and return columns from name to total. You can replicate this with iLock, but you cannot pass it a Boolean series. You must convert the Boolean series into a numpy array. We need to add dot values to make that Boolean selection work. Lambda is an alternative way of defining user-defined functions. With the use of Lambda, you can define the function in a single line of code. Here lock and iLock method select the rows whose age is greater than 22. We can use slice notation with the Lambda method. In codes 1 and 2, we are restricting the number of columns. Selection with dot add is nearly identical to dot lock, but it only selects a single cell in your data frame. We usually refer to this cell as a scalar value. To use dot at, pass it both a row and column label separated by a comma. Here humanity's value is selected from rows George and column branch. Selection with dot i it is nearly identical to dot i lock, but it only selects a single scalar value. You must pass it an integer for both the row and column locations. 
for selecting a single value, add and I methods are a bit faster than lock and I lock methods. I rarely use dot add or dot I it as they add no additional functionality and with just a small performance increase. I would discourage their use unless you have a very time sensitive application. Most people are familiar with the primary purpose of the data frame indexing operator, which is to select columns. A string selects a single column as a series, and a list of strings selects multiple columns as a data frame. To select a single column of data, simply put the name of the column in between the brackets. Let's select the student DF hobby column. It's possible to select multiple columns with just the indexing operator by passing it a list of column names. Let's select hobby and age. Using a list selects multiple columns. What people are less familiar with is that when slice notation is used, then selection happens by row labels or by integer location. This is very confusing and something that I rarely use but it does work. The indexing operator bracket can also do the Boolean selection. We can use the logical operators on column values to filter rows. We have selected the rows in which the value in total column is greater than 200 and age is greater than 20. Pandas allow for combining multiple logical operators. For instance, we can apply conditions on both total and age columns. When selecting multiple columns, you can select them in any order. It doesn't have to be in the same order as the original data frame. For instance, let's select branch, Rolno and hobby. The explicitness of lock I lock for selecting rows is highly preferred. The indexing operator alone is unable to select rows and columns simultaneously. The ISIN method is another way of applying multiple conditions for filtering. For instance, we can filter the names that exist in a given list. Here, ISIN method will check whether Bale and John are present in the index or not, and then returns the selected rows. In the next code, the ISIN method check values 200 and 300 in total column, and then returns the true condition row. You have seen examples of the ISIN method implemented on a single column at a time. But, you can implement the ISIN method to the entire data frame, see codes 1 and 2. Also, you can use dictionary data types to checklist data in columns, like code 3. Pandas is a highly efficient library of textual data as well. The functions and methods under the str accessor provide flexible ways to filter rows based on strings. For instance, we can select the names that start with the letter J. The contains method under the str accessor returns the values that contain a given set of characters. We can pass a longer set of characters to the contains function depending on the strings in the data. str method is only applicable to single columns having text data. There is another str function such as center, contains, count, find, findle, etc. The query function offers a little more flexibility at writing the conditions for filtering. We can pass the conditions as a string. For instance, the following code returns the rows that belong to the index one and have an age column value higher than 20. You can use string formatting to insert a variable column name into the query string. Use str.format to build the query string with variable names for both the column label and the comparison value. F strings available in Python 3.6 plus to create a nice readable query string with variable names for the column label in the comparison value. That's going to be end of this video. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything, leave a like. Thank you for watching till end.